All right. Hello, everyone. Hi. How are we doing today? Um, first, I'm going to start off with a little introduction. My name is Chef Jamal, or Jamal. Uh, if you want to keep it informal, it's totally fine. Um, give you a little background on myself. I have been in the culinary industry for about the last 15 years, so, you know, most of my adult life. Uh, I've been cooking in and out of kitchens. I've managed restaurants. Uh, I actually have my own business uh, here in Portland called Grassroots Food. Uh, I cook Caribbean food all around the city, uh, pop-ups, so... Um, so that's what I do. I also work here at Feed the Mass as their like lead chef and just like content creator. So I'm always cooking, always reading recipes, and I'm so, so excited uh, to show you guys some really cool recipes out of this really fun and exciting book that is packed. I mean, packed with really good recipes that are just like good to taste and just good for the heart and the soul and the body. Before we get started, are there any questions about the recipes or ingredients or equipment or procedures or how this is all going to happen. Fantastic. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, is I'll kind of give you a run through of all of the ingredients so we know what's happening. Uh, and then I'll let you know how we're going to cook everything. Um, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. Great. So I'll go with equipment first, right? So equipment I have a little pan here that we're gonna do our cabbage, our sauce, and all of those other things. Let me back up a moment, one second. Today we'll be cooking uh, this really cool pesto that we can put in a food processor, really quick and simple, really fresh and vibrant, which is gonna go really well with our triple ginger, triple citrus ginger cod. Or if you couldn't find cod, that's okay. You can get a firm white fish uh, like Pollock or sole or something else like that. Whatever fish you have is totally fine. We're gonna make it work. Um, <clears throat> and then we're also gonna do this, we're gonna do the slaw, the fish, and the pesto. It's all gonna be very bright and beautiful and colorful. Um, so I hope you guys get some really good stuff out of this. All right, equipment first. So equipment's gonna be, I have a pan here that the slaw and our sauce are gonna go into. Uh, I have the fish that I was able to get. And for me, this is gonna be Pollock. Cod was all out. That's okay. Um, and I'm gonna marinate on here and cook this in the oven as well. I have a little strainer with a bowl. That's gonna help for when we're juicing things so our hands don't get super messy. We can catch all of the debris and put all of our marinade in here. Really simple. Have a zester and then like a box grater sort of situation, but just the one side uh, for when we do our carrots. And then a little juicer, just in case we want to juice like a lemon or lime and not get our hands all icky uh, with all of that acid. And then I have some bowls for when we chop up our herbs, a peeler, <clears throat> and then our little thermometer, right? So we can check our fish temperature that we want to get to about 137. Um, and then some bowls, yeah. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do before we start with anything, right? I preheated the oven at 400 degrees. It takes a while to get up to temperature. So we're gonna make the marinade for the fish first so it can just do its thing and then we can work on everything else. If you have any questions or comments or need me to slow down, because I have a chef brain, right? So I go 100 miles per hour. Um, you can just turn on your microphone and just shout at me. We can have a fun conversation about what's going on. If that works for you, just let me know. If it doesn't work for you, we can figure something else out. All right, let's get cooking. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna get our, the things for our cod, right? So I have an orange, lime, lemon, Dijon mustard, some cayenne, wonderful ginger, and then some salt, right? And obviously our cod, bang. The first thing we're gonna do is work on this uh, marinade. Uh, so before we do anything, we need to figure out what we're doing with our, with our orange and lemon. We're gonna zest those first and then juice it, right? So there's two ways that we can do this. We're gonna zest this whole thing. We can use our zester, right, upside down to kind of capture everything, like so. If you don't have one of these bad boys, right, you could take your knife and then just kind of peel 
off a piece of that skin, right? Turn it down flat. And then just do like some really small cuts, really tiny cuts. We're gonna try to get this as small as we can because we don't really want to taste it. We don't, excuse me, we want to taste it. We just don't want to eat it as much. So the smaller we can get it, the better. And you can kind of just chop this up as you go. Now, you see I'm going super fast with this knife. Let me show you this really cool technique. We call it overhand. So a little grip on the knife, right? And I'm holding the back portion of it. And then my other hand is going on the top away from the blade. And I'm just kind of doing like a whole rocking motion here, right? Really simple, really easy. Bang. Now I'm going to keep chopping this up. Okay. So if you're zesting, keep zesting. If you're chopping, let's chop it up together, but we're going to need the whole zest, right? The whole orange to zest. So, so instead of doing all of this for mm, 20 minutes or so, we are going to go back to the zester, put this over here, right into the bowl for our marinade and continue to zest. Now I picked out these recipes because I love, I love flavor. I love colors and I love like combining that like sweet and savory with acidic. Uh, and that's what we have going on. We have so much acidity in these orange and lemons and lime and the salt, right? That's all going to bring it out. Uh, now when we get to the cabbage, the cabbage is going to be really savory and like, it's going to be really almost like stewy in a sense. So these flavors are going to go really well together. All right. So I'm going to zest this bad boy up. Once again, I'm really excited to be working with you guys. So this video is going to be saved for you guys so you can use it as a reference. And this is a really cool thing. We're going to be making more videos and putting them on our YouTube channel for, out of the cookbook just for you guys. So if you want to do more of these, right, we're going to have some just regular YouTube videos on our YouTube page that you can just look at. Um, and it's going to be straight out of this cookbook. All right. Zesting, zesting, zesting. It's a lot of zest. It's a big old orange here. <clears throat> All right. Got most of that. Get all of this. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question? Of course, please. Um, you just indicated about your YouTube channel. Is that something that we can subscribe to or is it under your name? Absolutely. So it's going to be Feed the Mass at YouTube so, or youtube.com backslash Feed the Mass. Um, and that's where you'll have all of the videos that we do as, you know, as Feed the Mass. But then there's going to be like a separate playlist just for these videos, just for the videos out of this, um, the Cancer Fighting Kitchen cookbook. Great question. Thank you. Yes. Okay, cool. That's zested, right? While the zester is here, I'm going to keep using this tool uh, for the marinade. So that's going to be our lemon zest. Same thing, right? Nothing super fancy, just zesting this bad boy away. And if you're zesting right now, you can smell all of these wonderful aromas already. So, you know, it's going to be super tasty, right? Zesting, zesting, zesting. <laughs> and usually when I'm cooking in my kitchen or the studio kitchen, I'm always humming or there's music playing along. So it's a little bit different doing this on camera with no music in the background, but that's okay. So if you hear me humming, kind of just passing some time. So if you're working with cod at home, right? If you have cod at home or you have extra cod or this cod recipe, the beautiful thing about cod is it's very forgiving. So if you overcook it by five minutes, if you over fry it by a couple of minutes, or if you over roast it for a couple of minutes, it won't be affected as much as a, as a other fish, like a, like a, hmm, like a tilapia or something, a, a something that's a little bit more delicate. This, cod will hold up to a lot of different ways of cooking. Okay. So we have our zest in here, right? Cool. 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 Now we are going to juice these guys. So it's going to be a half cup of orange juice, right? So I'm going to cut this bang. Look at that. That's fresh. That's from down the street of Sheridan's. They have some of the most wonderful produce. Uh, that's the only place I really go to get produce. Um, just so you guys know, Squeeze this right in here, half a cup. 
So we're probably going to have to use this whole orange, and that's okay. Bang, bang. That's one. And then we're going to do this guy. Oh, great. Smells wonderful. Okay. Next, we're going to get our lime juice, which is just going to be about two tablespoons. So not as much as the orange, just a little something, something. Gives that real strong acidic flavor. Bang, that's it. Done. <clears throat> okay. Next, we're going to do the same amount for our lemon. Mm -mm -mm. And now this is really going to catch these seeds. I see those trying to come out. Bang, that's two tablespoons. Perfect. <clears throat> so the next thing that we're going to need for our marinade is going to be some ginger, right? So ginger has all this, this tough outer layers there, right? I have a little vegetable peeler. So you can kind of just put it down on the board on whichever seems to be the flatter side or the more comfortable side for you and just kind of peel some of that tough exterior off. Get it nice and clean. I'll take these scraps, keep my board clean so I can keep my mind clear about what's going on. Chop that little nub off and great. That's going to be our ginger. Now to do this, I'm just going to cut little slivers as small as I can. So this flavor can be infused during the marinade. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit of extra ginger because I love that little punch that it gives. And since it's going to be hanging out on our fish for about 30 minutes or so, might be a little bit less. And I'll tell you why in a second. Um, it's going to really, really be great. So when it comes to fish and like seasoning it and marinating it, marinating it, we don't need a lot of time for all of these flavors to sink into the meat. Here's a comparison. So if you were cooking chicken the day of, you'd probably want to take it out a couple of hours beforehand and get some salt and whatever spices that you want for the flavor to like really infuse in there for it to be salted properly. With fish, you can do it as you're cooking. It only takes about 15 to 30 minutes to really get all of this wonderful, wonderful flavor in there. Now I'm going back to the other technique, right? Over and chop this up. So when you're cooking fish, right, you don't need a lot of time. So that's why this recipe is so great. We have an hour to hang out and we're going to get all of this flavor in there. If we were doing something like poultry, beef, lamb, whatever, it would take a little bit longer for us to season that. Okay. I'm going to get this as small as I can, as small as I can. Great. Great. Okay. Clear off the knife, clear off my hands, a little scoop, bang. Okay, ginger's done, okay? I have a little pinch of cayenne here, and this cayenne for me is gonna be extra hot because I love heat. That heat really does something for my body. Uh, I've, gr I've grown up with a ton of spicy food, so I like it spicy. Pinch of cayenne, bang. Now, we need to put a little bit of salt. And a tablespoon, a tablespoon of olive oil. Instead of measuring it out, if you have a little container, just one or two healthy swigs around the outside, and that'll get us to where we're going. Now, since I put some salt in there, just gonna whisk it all together with my little fork. Okay, and since this is going on the prize, the prize of the show, our fish, I want to taste it, right? So have some, have some tasting spoons over here. Oh yeah, that's going to do the trick. Great, 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 great. Mm. I'm excited. Okay. So we're going to save half of this mixture to make our sauce with, and the other half is going to be our marinade. I'm going to put some gloves on so I can handle this fish, right? If you're at home, you don't need gloves because you have a, a kitchen sink right next to you. So you can wash your hands after we 
get this all marinated. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a nice little flip, do that, get that side, flip it, get the other side, get this all on top. Okay, so that's our fish, done. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of water to the edges and that's gonna be so when we bake it, it doesn't get super dry. There's still gonna be some moisture in there, right? Okay, that's done. We're gonna set it aside and we're just gonna keep moving. So the time right now is 6.28, right? So in about 10, 15 minutes, we'll check it again, make sure it's good. Now we are going to move on to da -da -da -da, the slaw, right? We're gonna save the pesto for last. We're gonna do our slaw first. So for the slaw, oh yeah. Switch these guys out. And we'll go through these ingredients as well. So, excuse me, excuse me. So our slaw is gonna consist of Napa cabbage. We only need a portion of it, but I wanted to show you the whole thing, right? We have some red cabbage, it's gonna give a great color overall. Then we have our carrot for a nice crunch. We have our fresh herbs, which are gonna be, let's go with, that's gonna be parsley, right? <clears throat> red onion, and then our sauces. Let me bring this closer to me so I'm not reaching, right? Oh yeah. Absolutely, great question. So let me bring the fish back into in the view here. Absolutely great question. And I'm gonna put another glove back on too. So if I'm home, I have this cod. If I'm you, we have this cod, right? <clears throat> So you see this side, the, the nicer side, the presentation side of the fish, right? That's the side where we're gonna be able to pull out all of these bones. So the rough side, not what we want, this side. You're gonna want to look down here and even run your finger slowly across the middle, kind of like where this spine is, where we see this darker piece of meat. And when you come across a bone, you can either try to pinch it out or if you have a set of pliers that can be washed, you can go in there and pull those out with the pliers, okay? Um, cod sometimes has a lot more bones than we think, uh, so it's, and when you cook it, it falls apart so much that you can pick the bones out, like if you missed one or two, while you're eating, because, well, that's just the cod, right? But yes, the pliers right down the middle, when you're feeling it with your finger, it should tell you where all of those little pin bones are and you should be able to take that out very easily. Great question, thank you so much. Back to the slaw, right? <clears throat> all right, so we're on, what are all these liquids over here? All right, so we have a little tamari, right? That's gonna be this guy. Dan, you wanna give us the overhead? This is gonna be our tamari, bang. This is gonna be our rice vinegar. This is gonna be our maple. This one is going to be, ba 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 ba. That might be me overthinking it. And then this is our sesame oil, okay? So the sesame oil is gonna be used as our oil in the pan. The rest are gonna create our beautiful sauces. So the first thing that we need to do is start chopping. So we're gonna start chopping things up. I'm gonna bring some bowls over. So we wanna cut our onion. Easiest way for me to cut an onion. <clears throat> I'm not gonna take the root off, the, the part with all of these little guys down here. I'm just gonna partially cut it off. And I do that so I can still have control when I'm cutting everything else. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. Completely cut the top off, bang, set that aside. <clears throat> now I have a flat surface and I can just cut this right down the middle do our peel. A sharp knife should not make you cry. 
That's a good tip to remember. If your knife is dull, the onions will make you cry. And sometimes just leaving your onions in like the pantry, a dark pantry will also like enhance those aromas and flavors and everything. So it, that is a good chance. At that point, there's a good chance that you'll start crying as you cut. But for me right now, no tears, I'm good. All right, so we have this root end, right? We have everything in place. And we wanna get this down to like a, like a thinly sliced. So while everything is together, just one of those, just nice rocking motion. I'm letting the knife do the work instead of my arm or hands, right? And we just need about, I think it's about a cup, a cup of these onions. So that's gonna be the whole thing. And then when you can't control it anymore, right? Flip it down the other side and get those nice little thin cuts. Get all these bits, because we want everything. Great. Let me get my compost ready. Because we're cleaning while we go. Now I'm gonna cut this other half. Same thing. And I'm also, what I'm doing with my other hand, right? is I'm just kind of curling it. So my fingertips are away and I feel the knife. I feel the knife on, on, the, th on the second part of my thumb, on my fingers here. And that lets me know that I have contact and I don't have to worry about fingers. Because sometimes when you're cutting really fast, our fingers start, start doing weird things. So we just want to make sure we have control and we know where the blade is at all times. Okay, great. Got that chopped up, compost here. Get this in a bowl. I'm gonna grab another bowl. Ooh. And these are our onions. Fantastic. Next, we're gonna cut half of this cabbage up. This is our red cabbage. We need about a cup of this. Now, I'm gonna set this aside. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this hard core, right? Because if we try to cook that, that's gonna be really tough to uh, bite into. So we just want the, the beautiful parts around it. So I'm gonna cut this out. And the best way to do that, you can, you can do it like this, right? Go in there, cut a notch. You could come back here on the flat surface, look at where the, where the root kind of sorta is, and then just do like a V cut. So a V notch in there. And that should remove, if we do it right, that core. Compost for the plants, great. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna shred this. You can do this one of two ways. You can get this on the box grater, bop, 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 and start going at it. It's a cooking class, so I can't do that. You know, I have to use a knife and show you guys how to do that. I'm gonna take off this outer layer. It's a little dull, right? Way better way better. Okay, now I'm gonna go through and just do some fine cuts. Now, we only need a cup. Look at that. And it shreds itself. That's great. We can save that cabbage for another day. Bowl. Right into the bowl, bang. So I'm gonna put both of our cabbages in this bowl, but I'm gonna keep the onions separate because those are gonna cook separately. All right, that one. I'm gonna clean off my knife and the board. All right, so this is that wonderful Napa cabbage and we're gonna need two cups. So we kind of saw what one cup right? It was about a fourth of the cabbage. So I'm going to need to double that, right? So that's going to be right here. And you can just chop this whole thing and save this for another day. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it on its side. And if it's easier at home, right? You could keep it on this side and chop it this way. Or you can cut a little piece off the end set that aside. This is your flat side. Use the natural like 
the natural way this is grown so you don't have to do much work. See that? And then once it falls apart, that's already shredded. So this is great. So we're going to need two cups. Two cups. Any questions from anyone so far? Comments? You just want to say hi. That's fine too. Hi. Hello. Now, I got to a point where it's hard to handle, and I'm just going to go through here, since it's still pretty thick, and just do a couple of these chops. Great. A little bit more than two cups, but that's okay. We're hungry. All right, I'm going to save these bits. Absolutely. So if you have coconut aminos, it's a great substitute for tamari, and it's also a great substitute uh, for soy. I recommend using that if soy just isn't in your diet. Really great flavor all, overall, so that is, that is okay. Absolutely. I really like that, uh, the Bragg's brand of aminos. Those are really tasty. Those are my, those are my entry level into, you know, the big substitutes for commonly used items. All right, cabbage. Cabbage is done. Now we're gonna move on to our carrot, right? Now for our carrot, we can try to use this, right? That's okay. First, sorry, let me show you something. So our carrot was kind of peeled already, but we can go through and just kind of peel that. So we can get some of that tough exterior on. I personally like to leave the skins on my vegetable. Um, I was reading this research a few years ago and it's like the skin gives us a lot of nutrients. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a medical professional by any means, but when I cook, I keep the skin on. If you would like to do that, I say go for it. I'll just show you how to do half of this, right? Just a simple this, right? This exterior on the exterior for most vegetables aren't super tough, right? So it'll break down just as easily as the insides, the edible portions. All right. We did that. Clean the board. Now I'm going to get a box grater. because <clears throat> this grater is just not gonna work for us. These holes are way too small. If you're trying to use a zester, that won't work. Those holes are way too small. In order to get to the consistency that makes sense for this slaw, we are just going to use these, this side of our box grater, right? So this is like the zesting area. This is like a zesting area, um, but right over here. And we're gonna need, what is this, a cup? A cup of carrots kind of go through it should be about three-fourths of this big carrot if you're using smaller carrots it might take you a couple to get to a cup that's okay right and remember this tool is still super sharp so we need to watch where our hands and fingers are my fingers and hands are up here all the way at the top just so they're clear out of the way and if you're moving faster than me that's also okay too Go for it, but just let me know if you run into any questions. All right, we're looking for a cup. Whoa, that's gonna be a healthy cup. Okay, clean off all these bits because we want all of it. And then that. Place this down here, and I'm gonna put this in with the cabbage. I'm gonna take a little bit out because it's a little bit more than a cup. Great. Fantastic. All right, clean up my little station. Next. All right, we have all of those and we're gonna work, we're gonna work on our herbies. So we have, is that parsley? That's parsley. So we need some cilantro. 
my way if I have my herbs mixed up. Here we go. We have some cilantro here. I'm just going to pick a couple of these leaves off and we don't need to do anything fancy. Just pick off a bunch. It's going to be used for a garnish at the end. So I would say do about four, three or four of these healthy stems here. Okay. A little bit more. Great. Tuck that away. And if you have any extra greens like this, right, any herbs, the best way to store this, get a little, get a paper towel and kind of just wrap it in it and then put that in a plastic bag. And I promise you, instead of having it for four or five days, you can extend the shelf life or the fridge life of these uh, herbs for another week or so. Um, so that's just a good little tip to have for the future. I wonder if you can use parsley. Their husband hates uh, cilantro. Can you use parsley? You can use parsley. You can use cilantro. I feel like it's both are going to be great. The cilantro is going to give you a really rich flavor. Some people don't like the taste of cilantro. It tastes like soap. So when I prepare dishes, I take out cilantro from everything and then I substitute it with parsley just so no one has that, that soapy flavor when they're eating whatever it is that's happening. So either one is great. Bang. So the next thing that we're going to do, <clears throat> we, cut, we cut up all of those, these veggies and stuff. I'm going to clean this all up, get it out of the way, tuck this over here, take out our sauces that we need. Mm -hmm. Keep this for the end and then get this out. All right. Next, 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 next. All right. So I'm going to turn my, my pan on, right? Uh, for me, it's going to be about a medium to high heat, right? Start with that. Let that get warmed up. Now, in the meantime, right, we said it was about 30 after. We're at 15 minutes for our fish. I'm just going to take a peek at it. Smell it. Everything looks good so far. If you are, if you're marinating, right, and there's a point where you're marinating your piece of fish and it starts to turn colors. The acid is actually cooking it at that point. So we want to make sure we start cooking it well before the acid starts to cook it. We want to cook it with heat and not acid this go around. There's a lot of acid over there. So that's why I'm kind of keeping a watchful eye <clears throat> on it. So I think the 15 minutes that we have on these little guys are perfect. I have the water in there already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in the oven for 10 minutes. We're working our slaw. And then once we're done with that, we're almost there. So 10 minutes in a 400 degree oven. I have a little timer here. Great. We have our pan heating up. Fantastic. We have our ingredients here for that. Now we can start thinking about our pesto, right? Make sure we have all of our ingredients and everything for that. So we'll go through, we'll go through that. So for our pesto, we have some parsley. What do we have? We have some parsley, some cilantro. We have some mint, six mint leaves, mint leaves, mint leaves. Uh, we have some cumin that I ground it up uh, before the show because we had it whole, right? Then we have a little, I have smoked paprika, which I think is just going to really, really give it a nice uh, depth to the pesto, right? Because it's super simple. We have our garlic clove that we're going to chop up. We have our olive oil here. I also have some water and then some salt. Okay. All of this is going to go into the food processor. We'll blitz it really quickly. Not a long time. If you don't have a food processor, but you have, let's say, a mortal and pesto, right? You could... You can get a little workout in or have someone else get a little workout in. You chop up all this stuff, have someone else just kind of get in there and do it that way. The old fashioned, the traditional way, and just kind of get your pesto in there. For us, we're going to blitz it, 
It's going to be super simple. All right. Our pan's getting hot. All right, so let's do this. A little bit of oil. That's that sesame oil. I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit because I see a little smoke. Get the pan nice and coated. It's nice and hot, right? Onions. Dump those beautiful red onions right in there. And as always, I like to season as we go. Super important. We want to season on every level. A little bit of salt. That was a healthy, healthy chef. Measurement there. Okay, great. Let those rock and roll for a little bit. It's gonna be a couple minutes, that's okay. Okay? Questions so far? Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Anything, just let me know. <laughs> All right, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna take our garlic. Now, instead of going through and chopping our garlic and then chopping our garlic and then chopping our garlic and it gets sticky and it gets everywhere, we're just going to take the flat side of our knife. It's gonna be loud, guys. And you're just gonna smash it, right? Super flat now. And now we can just go through and give that a nice little chop. Even though it's going in the food processor, even though you might be doing this uh, with the mortar and pestle, we wanna get this as small as we can so the machine or our arm or our forearm or our friend's arm or forearm doesn't have to work as hard, right? Bang. That garlic is chopped right into the mixer, okay? I'm gonna put that paprika right into the mixture. We have our mint leaves. Cool way to do this. Put them all, stack them all together, right? Create like a little burrito. I got a little mint burrito. I'm gonna shake this up. Great. We can see we're starting to get some little, everything's kind of cooking through a little bit there. Back to the mint. We have our little mint burrito and we're just gonna give small little chops here. Now, just so you guys know, this is also called like a chiffonade. So if you ever see that in a cookbook somewhere, you know that you just roll it up in a little burrito and you have your chiffonade. Mint, smells amazing, all the little bits. That was six, that was six mint leaves, all right? Cumin, bang, right inside there, okay? And then we're gonna use a cup, a cup of the parsley. Now, instead of measuring out and picking through all of the leaves. I see a majority of what we need is gonna be right on top. Bang, there we go. <clears throat> and then get that grouped in together as close as we can, and then just give it a nice little rough chop, right? Great, 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 great. Okay. And now we're gonna take that right into our food processor. We give this a nice little toss, see where we're at. Okay. Next, we're gonna go back to this guy over here. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil. Some good fat for us. And then I'm gonna start putting in, whoops, putting in our sauces, right? All the sauces there. Oh, it smells good. I hope someone's cooking because it smells good. And then we're gonna put all of this in. All right, all right. And we're gonna cook that down for about 10 minutes or so. The, lick, the, the water is going to start coming out of those guys and then it's going to like reduce a bit in size and that's okay. That's what we want. Just let that rock and roll. We're good. Next, for our pesto, right? Right over here, we need a half cup. Bang. 
I see some stemmies. If you have too many stems in this or in the future when you're making a sauce, you're blitzing it, and you have too many parsley or cilantro uh, stems, it's gonna make your sauce come out fibrous. It's gonna be these long strands. So we wanna make sure we don't have a ton of those in here. So I'm picking those guys off. That's what I'm doing right now. So it's not too many. A couple are fine, but we don't want any super, super thick ones. Bang. All right, same thing. Kind of get it together. Yes, please. It's different. Yeah, there's like three places where cilantro goes. So, uh, so the first one that we chopped, right? That should be the parsley that we're going to use to garnish our fish at the end. Now we're cutting the uh, cilantro to go in with the parsley for the pesto, and then we're going to have some cilantro some extra cilantro, so I'll use half of this, uh, to garnish the slaw with. So I'll do this, a little rough chop. Great question, thank you. Take some of that, set it aside, garnish, get these here. Chop that up. So this pesto recipe, there's so many variations to pesto, but right here, this pesto is just the basic grounds of it. This is a variation of, the, of a pesto. If you wanted to do something a little bit heavier, because this is gonna be light, you can use nuts. You can use pine nuts, salted, unsalted, uh, walnuts. Any of those nuts will give you like a really, really, really rich um, consistency in this. That's our fish. Let's check it out. Smells amazing. So I'm looking at it, right? And just on the tips, I can tell it's not fully cooked. So I'm gonna give it another five minutes, all right? Another five minutes with that guy. Cool. Clean off my board. <clears throat> right, so there are different variations of pesto. So just use this as a guideline. With all cookbooks, Use it as a guideline and then kind of come up with your own things to substitute if you want to change the flavor. All right, great. So we have everything in there except for the olive oil, which is a pretty decent amount, right? We're looking for, what is it, four cups, two cups, three cups, fourth of a cup. Bang, that's in there. A little bit of water, some salt. And then, finally, some lemon juice. I see seeds. So I'm just gonna juice that. And the best way to juice, if you have one of these little cool situations right here, you put the cut side down so the juices can go out and the seeds stay in there. If you do it the other way, it might squirt you in the face. All right, check this out, bang. And we're looking for three tablespoons. Ooh, this one's tough. All right. Bang. That's great. I'm gonna check this slaw out. Oh yeah, look at that. You can see the bottom, everything that was in touch with the heat starting to wilt. Let's give everything a nice little turn. All these wonderful colors. Smells amazing. Great. At this point, our pesto is ready. So I'm just gonna blitz this up for just, to, just, just till it's completely emerged with each other and you'll see it go from like an oily, watery sort of situation to something that's more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, emulsified. 
Du måste vara. And as always, we're going to give it a nice little taste. See if it needs salt or heat. Great. Great, great, great. That tastes really good. All right, so now we're done with that, right? And we're going to drop this into a bowl. Great. Put it over here. All right, so next we are going to taste our slaw. If you have your slaw rocking and rolling, we want to taste it because it is, I want to say this is done because we don't want to cook this too much. Where everything is super soft. We still want a little bit of crunch. We're going to taste this bad boy. Super hot. That's fantastic. That's done. Take this, dump it in a bowl. Great. I'm going to use the same pan for our, the sauce for the fish, right? Put that to the side. Okay, so our fish is working, our slaw is done, the pesto is done. We have a couple more minutes on the fish, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the stuff that we have here so we can plate and we'll be all set. So just give me one minute to clean up and I'll be right back. All right, so the workstation's cleaned up a bit. Our fish just went off, but before we take that out, we wanna get our, the other half of our, of our sauce, right, of our marinade in the pan, in a pan, so it can cook a little bit, and that's gonna be our dressing. Now, there's not a lot of it, right? So we just need it to cook just a little bit. So this pan's hot, okay? So it won't take, it won't take much. Now I'm taking out the fish. Oh yeah. We'll give it a little test. That temperature we wanted was 137. 130. Oh yeah, super cooked, super great. Now we can 
start plating everything. Look at that, this sauce has, there was, there was a decent amount of it, but once it reduces, it becomes this wonderful, thick, very aromatic. Oh, it's so aromatic. All right, take this off the heat. Drop that right there. We have our spoon, our spatula, these guys. Yes. Is there a recommendation that you have for a garlic that's infused? Someone that can't eat garlic. That's okay. Um, I would just leave the garlic out and just kind of move on. There's not really a, a substitute. You can maybe go for ginger. It's a lot more potent, but it'll give you a similar profile when it comes to taste. Just, I would say use less ginger. Um, that, would be my, that would be my recommendation for that. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to plate, and we can kind of see what that looks like, right? So, first thing I'm going to do, I have this pesto here. I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom of the plate. Okay. Then we have our slaw, which is just swimming. Okay, and then we have our beautiful, beautiful fish. Okay, take some of this parsley. Some of the cilantro, right? And then that sauce. of the marinade, and we're just gonna spoon that right over this guy. And I wanna get all of that. All right, that is it. That's it. We just made pesto, we made a slaw, and we cooked our fish in about 45 minutes or so. That's really, really great. I'm here for questions, I'm here for comments, uh, more substitutions. Uh, we can flip through the recipe book for a little bit to find some other recipes to talk about if you want to. I am at your disposal for the next 10 minutes or so. I have a question about the knife you use. What's the style of the knife and is there a particular brand that you turn? Oh yeah, uh, okay, here's a fun story about this knife, right? I was, uh, I graduated high school, needed to find a job for college. I ran across this thing called Cutco Knives. This is a Cutco knife. It has this ergonomic handle with the ridges in there, really great for gripping, right? Uh, it has all these ridges. <clears throat> it's super sharp. It stays super, super sharp. And this is a, not a chef knife, but like a Sentoku because of the, the curve of the blade. It's great for the rocking motion, right? If I were to show you a chef knife, right? So I'm gonna hold this up. A chef knife has a totally different like cut to it. I like this knife for when I'm doing like demos and stuff or like classes because there's less blade and you can kind of see everything that's happening. Chef knife is also great. They come in all different forms, four, six, eight, uh, lengthwise. But this Cutco knife is really great for us. And I think you can just get this in just like Walmart, online, or whatever the case may be, I would recommend just having at least one of these in your arsenal, for sure. Thank you. Absolutely. So <clears throat> in our dish, dishes that we created here today, right, um, the one thing that is super prevalent is going to be salt in the, like the tamari or the soy. Uh, when we reduce that, it's going to give us that saltiness that we need. You can also go with like 
seaweed broken up and add that as your salt in your like slaw so you don't have to add that much salt to anything so once again the amino acids the uh, tamari when those things reduce it's going to give us a lot of salt uh, salty flavor uh, so that is a great substitution for salt when it comes to this dish that we did right here um, yes so i hope that answers your question All right, guys, I'm going to taste this, um, but before I do that, I'm going to say thank you so much. Uh, we're really excited to be working with uh, Pink Lemonade. Uh, it's a really, really, really good cause. These Feed the Mass and Pink Lemonade uh, getting together to help the community is what we're all about. Um, if you like this and you want to see more, once again, you can go on our YouTube page. Uh, we're going to have a lot of recipes up on there showing you things like this, but more importantly, we're going to have more videos straight out of the Cancer Kitchen uh, cookbook uh, just for you guys. Um, it's, I mean, it's going to be available to a lot of other people too, but we're making it so you guys have more resources uh, when it comes to really healthy and delicious meals that can be sourced right at your local market. I got all of this at our Asian market, uh, H Mart. Um, so if you're ever down there and you're like, I want to make something like that, this was really cheap. This was less than $25 overall. Uh, really approachable and you can kind of make this with with like kids uh, or someone who's just kind of scared to cook and I think yes yes all right thank you so much have a great yes absolutely have a great evening once again my name is Jamal chef Jamal here at feed the mass if you have any questions comments or concerns just let us know but for now have a great night and I hope you enjoy your wonderful meal bye guys